What's up? What's going on, guys? It's DJ Rick Webb, and this is the first video in the cable series of videos that I'm going to be making on this channel. In the first video, we're going to dive into pretty much everything you could ever want to know about maintaining your cables. We're going to talk about the maintenance of cleaning them. We're going to talk about organization, how you organize them. We're going to talk about how you properly wrap them. And we're going to talk about how you can store your cables. And specifically, this is all how I do it. So you guys might have your own opinions and you might have your own methods out there. This is how I do it. This is how I store them. This is how I organize them. So don't consider this as an absolute. This is just how I do it. This is supposed to spur ideas of what you can do for your own cable situation. What's up everyone, it's DJ Rick Webb and on today's video we're gonna be talking about cable maintenance. So in terms of maintenance, we have cleaning. Now most of you probably don't really ever need to clean your cables. I on the other hand do, and that's for two reasons. One, the most common one right now is because I have been DJing at the bar, the bar, club, gig logs that you guys have been seeing. The floors are very sticky, I mean drinks are spilled all the time, and the floors get sticky there and people tend to spill drinks a lot at a bar. So my cables end up getting a little bit of sticky residue on them over time. And um, it just isn't really worth cleaning every time when you're doing it every week, every other week. So the season finally is over. The gig logs though have not been fully uploaded yet. But the season's over, so I need to clean all the sticky residue off. And I'm gonna be showing you guys how to clean them here in a second. The second reason is for outdoor events. So outdoor events, you have dew and you get grass and dirt and sometimes your cables get a little muddy so you might need to clean your cables for that reason. Now I'm not 100% sure if there's an industry standard way to clean cables but I'm going to show you what I do. So behind me I set up a table and I have a pile of cables on the table and actually the pile was a lot bigger. I mean all these cables down here are drying right now. They've already been cleaned in the method that I'm going to be showing you guys here in a second but I still have this pile of cables right here to clean. So let me walk you through what I do. So we got my table set up and right here I have a bucket of just hot water and dish soap. Preferably dish soap with degreaser for the, um, the stickiness that I'm actually going to deal with. So I made sure it has degreaser. It's basically, it's just Dawn. So uh, Dawn and hot water and then I got some wash rags in here as well. So this is the next cable up to go. Um, basically what I do is I'm going to lay it out and then I'm going to slowly pull it through the bucket of water. So I'm on my knees here just to get in frame, but right here we have a cable. This one happens to be an extension cable. Same thing applies to XLRs, DMX. Extension cords especially, it is 100% fine to dip the end in here. You just need to make sure that it dries properly. And also this is an outdoor grade extension cord. XLR, so like right here is an XLR. As you can see, I have Velcro ties on mine. We'll get into that later. Velcro ties, you want to try and avoid getting wet. Um, also, the ends you want to try and avoid getting wet, so I recommend just taking your rag and just wiping down the end a little bit um, instead of actually dunking it in the water like we're going to be doing with the cable. Back to the cable here, um, basically I'm dunking it in the water and then I'm taking the wash rag and I'm wrapping it around the cable, squeezing it with one hand, and now I have to stand up to get leverage here, but I'm dipping the cable down into the water as you can see in this close-up shot now, and I'm pulling the cable through. So I got the wash rag wrapped around the cable and I'm just pulling it through. Now the excess cable I'm just letting it lay onto the floor. I have carpet down here. It's not going to hurt the carpet. It's just an area that it can dry. So yeah, when the cable is fully ran through and cleaned, I just lay it down on the floor and I allow it to dry. Typically dry time, I let them dry for like two to four hours. So a couple days have passed now and I kind of put this project on the back burner, but we're back. And now that we've covered maintenance, we can talk about management. How do you manage all these cables? The first thing we gotta talk about is how do you wind up these cables properly so that you don't damage them. So winding up slash wrapping up cables. I know of three main methods that I've seen and used out of those methods. Two of them are improper and one of them is the main proper way that I will be demonstrating. But there are also a lot of specialty wrapping ones that make like loops and all kinds of interesting stuff that are mainly used for really, really long cords and really, really long wires. And some of the people that are into product production and stuff like that might know them, construction, other things like that. But we're going to mainly focus on these next three methods. Starting off with the most improper of all of them is the over the shoulder method. This is very, very, very bad 
for your cables. Mostly because you are putting twisting and flexion onto the cable, forcing it into that route, not letting it naturally wind itself up. Very, very, very close method to that that I see a lot with smaller cables is the around the hand method. Also very improper and bad for your cables and I probably should not be doing either of those to this very fancy Hosa Edge XLR. The second most commonly used method, this is the most commonly used method I see out there, and it's not really terrible for your cables, but it's definitely not the most proper, is just taking the cable like so and making a loop and just continuing to make that loop. Now I'm not gonna lie, I used that method for a couple years starting out as a DJ because it didn't put a lot of force on the cable compared to the over the shoulder method and my cable seemed to stay in generally good contact. Let me show you this cable right here. As you guys can see, this cable has been flexed a lot over its lifespan. And this cable actually was one of the original cables that I first got that went through two years of abuse of that circle method. As you can see, this is very bad. I'll show a close-up video right now. And this can, if continuing to use those methods, either over the shoulder or the circle method, can cause permanent damage to this cable over time. So those two methods are by far improper methods of wrapping a cable over the shoulder and over the hand are very like you should definitely try to stay away from those if you want to do the circle method it is definitely not proper and definitely not used in very high-end production music companies concerts stuff like that I'm pretty sure most of them are trained to be using this next method which is the over under cable wrapping method. I will say first off, there are plenty of videos if you just search over under cable wrapping method. There are plenty of videos that are a lot more detailed and explain why this method is so good. But I'm gonna just quickly show you how to do it and then I will kind of explain why it's used. So first off, you're gonna to wanna to take the cable with the connector in whatever hand you prefer to wrap the cable onto. I prefer my right hand, it's my dominant hand. So I hold it facing me and first off, you're gonna start like you would with the circle or the loop method and make your first over loop. Now, the next one is kind of interesting. It's the under portion. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your other hand and instead of grabbing it like so, you're gonna grab it backwards like this. And you're gonna pull it up, keeping this bottom end twisted in and make the loop. It kind of looks counterintuitive the way that you pull it up, so a little bit closer here, you pull up on the cable and you twist in, so your hand's a normal wrist lock, and you wrap it over. Then you go back and you do the over again, just the general loop, flip your hand, grab it, twist it in, and you get your under. Over, under, and you continue all the way through until your cable is fully wound up. Now the beauty of this is that now when you take your cable, we're gonna change the camera here a little bit, and you take the one end and you go to throw it out. As you can see, the cable lies very flat all the way through with basically no loops at all. Anybody that's ever used the over the shoulder method and have tried to throw the cable out knows that it starts to loop and tangle, which is why this method is used. Now, the circle method will also cause a little bit of tangles, but nowhere near as bad as the over the shoulder. But um, quickly, I wanna explain why this method is used in comparison to the circle method. So the circle method, you're going like this. What you're doing is you're twisting this cable. Every time you do that loop, you're causing a twist in this cable. So basically you can tell that over time as you twist and twist and twist the cable, you're going to be twisting those inner fibers and wires and eventually one of them might get twisted all the way and damaged or loosened. It could be bad for your cable. With the over under method, once you go over, you twist it that one direction. When you do the under, you're twisting it back the other direction. These are just slight twists. Each loop is a slight twist in the cable. But basically, it allows for the cable to not have any tension or flexion in either direction, which is why this method is used. Okay, so now we have our cables wound up properly. Now, how do you hold this cable 
from being unwound when you're storing it. You guys probably already know this. Velcro ties. Velcro ties are what I use on every single one of my cables. And actually, due to this maintenance project that I'm doing right now, a lot of my cables have either broken ones or they need new ones. And the, the bar that I work at, that all that sticky residue that's on the cables also gets in that Velcro and ruins the Velcro ties. So I, have, I also have new cables that I've got from Hosa and stuff that need Velcro ties. So I'm going to be putting those on these cables. Now, the Velcro ties that I use are nothing special. They're just these cheap ones right here. Links in the description below to where you can pick these up. They are just cheap Velcro ties that you can find on Amazon. Uh, I believe like a hundred pack will run you like 20 to 30 bucks. And honestly, you really shouldn't have more than a hundred cables if you're just starting out. But they just come in rolls like this. And you just, this is like the beginner roll that doesn't mean anything. Um, you pull it off. Here's your Velcro tie. You pull out the little center here that's in there. You take the end of your cable, take the Velcro tie, pull the end through the loop here, pull it tight, and it Velcros down onto the cable and it doesn't come off the cable, which is huge. So that way you don't have to worry about just having a pile of Velcro ties at the end of the night. The Velcro tie, the Velcro tie, the Velcro ties are already on your cable. It makes your life a thousand times easier. And honestly, guys, you might not think that it saves you time or whatnot, but honestly, these Velcro ties at the end of the night on your cables save you a load of time when it comes to both tearing down, getting all your cables wound up, and also it helps you when you're setting up because you can toss out, lay out all your cables, and they don't get all tangled together. So basically, it, it's a huge lifesaver, and I highly recommend that you guys get these on your cables if you do anything in terms of management. Alrighty, so we've maintenance, we've cleaned all our cables. If you really need to, you really shouldn't have to. We know how to wrap them properly now. We put Velcro ties on so that way they don't untangle or, or they don't get tangled and they don't unwind themselves. Now, one step further you can take is organization and uh, management of knowing what cable is which. Now, believe it or not, labeling your cables is a pretty big deal, especially if you get into doing anything where there is multiple companies involved not just DJ companies but like a photographer or all these other different companies have their own cables so having your cables properly labeled that makes sure that you get your cables back at the end of the night and also that you don't take anyone else's cables that aren't marked as yours how do you label your cables though now as you guys know there's many options out there there's the little uh, type things that print out the little slips uh, DJ bar uses them I forget what they're called off the top of my head but like they print out the little white label with the label on them. The label makers, yeah, those. Um, Bar uses them. I'm not a huge fan of those because I don't like a lot of big labels hanging off my cables. And also, I feel that they could break easily. So the method I use for labeling my cables as mine are Sharpies. This is a gold. I'm out of silver. I should have went to Walmart and get, got a couple silver. Normally, I use silver on all of my black cables. And then if like my cable has a silver connector on it, I'll use a black Sharpie. Or also on the electrical tape, which we'll get into here in a second, I can also write with the black Sharpie with the electrical tape. And this is something I've really been slacking on because I have so many cables. Getting around to labeling all of them takes forever. But um, basically right here, uh, I just put an RW. That's my name, Ricky Weber. I put an RW on all of my cables. So I'm gonna be going through and doing that to all the cables. But as well as that, this is something I've really wanted to do for a while, is color coordinating all of my cables on the ends of them. So this, these are just multicolor, different colors of electrical tape. You can buy these at Walmart, you can buy these at Amazon. Link will be in the description below to where you can pick them up on Amazon. But so I have multiple colors here and all these are gonna mean different things for my cable. Starting off, there's three main types of cables that I use. There's electrical cables, there are DMX cables, and there are XLR cables. So I decided since power is the majority of my cables, I have more power cables than anything else, um, especially when we talk about like uh, IEC cables, I have tons of those cables. So I'm gonna leave all those black. I'm just not gonna label them. Now DMX and XLR, I have less of them, but it is very important to make sure which one is DMX and which one is XLR. So that's where these blue and green come in. Um, personally, my preference that I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using blue for my XLRs. I'm going to be using green for my DMX. That's just my personal preference. You can decide on whatever color code you want. Next, you can get really specific with this because, I mean, 
This is lengths of cables is what I'm going to use these three colors for. You can use probably six or seven depending on how many lengths of cables you got. I mean, you got 100 foot, you got 50 foot, 25 foot, 20 foot, 15, 10, six, two, four. But for the most part, I only have like three lengths I really care about. So for me, that is my 25 footers. I wanna know what my 25 foot cables are. I want to know what my six foot cables are and I want to know what all my three feet and under cables are. So to determine that, white is going to be my 25 footers, yellow is going to be my six footers, and red is going to be three feet and under. Now in terms of power cables, yes I have 50 footers and I have 100 footers, but a 50 foot cable is pretty easy to tell by eye that it is a 50 foot cable and 100 foot is easily to tell by eye how long it is. It's mostly those small cables that's hard to look at them and judge off the get-go how big they are. And also you gotta think about roadies. If you tell the roadie, hey, I need a 25 foot XLR cable, they, they might grab the 20, they might grab the 15, they might grab the 10, you never know. But if you tell them, grab the XLR cable, which is blue, and it has a red tie on it for 25 feet, grab that cable, they're gonna grab that cable. It's pretty simple. So that's what I'm gonna get into right now. I got a lot, 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 lot of cables to, um, cause I've never done this color coding thing before, but it's, it's, it's a big thing and I'm really excited for the future of doing it. That took forever. I'm pretty sure I spent a little over three hours doing all these cables. So, just out of curiosity, I'm gonna count how many cables I have. Also, I don't know why I don't have a voice right now. I wasn't talking. Let's find out. And the total amount of cables that I own for DJing is 106. I actually think that's a little less than what I thought. One little side note, I actually changed up the coloring order that I was doing. Because I was thinking about it, my 25 footers are normally on the ground and my shorter ones are normally used on like T-bars. So using white for my longer ones would have got a lot dirtier. So I used the darker red for my 25 footers. Yellow ended up being anywhere from 6 feet up to 10 feet and white ended up being anywhere from two feet to five feet. Okay, so now that that is all over, we have one last thing to discuss with cable organization. And that's where do you put them? Where do you store them? Where do you, what do you do with them? Let's talk about that. So in terms of lighting cables, you can probably just put them in your bag with your lights. They will normally have a pocket for them. And that is what I do with power cables. So every one of my lighting bags has exactly enough power cables to power every fixture inside of that bag. So that's one method, but that only covers like the cables for those lights. So most people are gonna resort to totes probably or bags. So I use both. I've moved to using bags a lot more often lately because just because they take up less space when I'm transporting and not having a trailer yet, it makes a lot more sense to use bags at this point. Probably going to switch over to using road cases eventually when I get a trailer though. So as far as totes go, just these simple totes like this. You can buy them at Walmart. You can buy them pretty much anywhere. You can buy them on Amazon too. Those work great for storing just bulk cables. I have two dedicated cable totes. One is purely for extension cords and the other one is for all XLR, DMX, and IEC cables. Now moving over to the bag side of it, you could just use a standard duffel bag. Most duffel bags, I'll let you know though, will not hold up to the abuse of throwing them around with heavy cables in them. So I made an investment around homecoming season to purchase a pretty hefty cable bag, and that is right here. It's actually a cable filing bag, so there's all kinds of files in here. This is the big boy one. It's made by Cable, Cable Fly, the original gig organizer. I don't know what the hell that means. But it's got two big pockets on the front, which I use to hold like my smaller cables, like my RCAs, and my less used cables, and also my microphones are stored in the front there. And then the cable file bag is used to hold all of my main cables for my gigs. Along with being a cable file bag, it also has another big pocket on the back side of the bag, which is great for storing things like these uh, two-way junction cables and um, just little surge protectors. Now the cable file bag itself 
is not the most cost effective thing in the world. That cable file bag is gonna set you back around $100. But the good news about the bag is it's built like a tank and the zippers on this thing are super strong and literally I have, I have put this thing through some abuse and it has stood the test of time so far. Um, so I highly recommend that if you have the money and you're thinking about using bags instead of going the route of using totes. One quick little downside though to the cable file bag, you can only fit probably a 25 foot extension cord in the files themselves and you have to make sure to wrap all of your cables in a small fashion, probably no more than like eight inches in diameter so that they actually can fit in the files of the file bag. So now I'm gonna put all my cables away as well as filling up the cable file bag. I'll quickly run through the cable file bag one more time in like a vlog mode for you guys. And then we're gonna wrap up this video. Okay, so now that everything is put away in their correct locations, um, let me just go through a couple things that I talked about there for a second. So here's the cable file bag, which is probably the coolest thing you guys wanna see. Here is the cable file bag. So this is the main compartment in here. Lots and lots of cables. So basically, this bag has every last cable I need to set up any configuration of my speakers as well as all the power cords I will need to do a typical mobile event minus my 50 foot extension cords. There are four 5 foot XLRs. These are all Hosa by the way. All these XLRs in here are Hosa cables and a few of the extension cords are also Hosa as well. There are four 25 foot uh, Hosa Edge XLR cables in here. Three of the, six, the 5 foots. Then there are three or two of the extension cords with these three outlet plugs on the ends of them. Those are pretty handy to have. There are two of these Furman power conditioners in here as well. These power conditioner power strips. There's six outlets on each one of those. Uh, then we have four IECs that are, that are 10 foot. Then we have two of just the standard 25 foot black extension cords. And then we have in here there's another 20 foot hose edge XLR cable and on the end we have the last two locking IECs which are for the SRX series speakers. Then inside of the compartments here we have some business cards as well as extra velcro ties, a multi-tool in this compartment. This compartment holds the two GTD audio wireless microphones as well as a wired microphone, a RCA to headphone jack, a uh, RCA cable itself and a quarter inch to quarter inch cable. Then on the back side, like I showed you guys, is all of the power strips as well as those convert those uh, splitter cables for extension cords. And then this is the tote I was talking about that holds all of my IECs, my extra XLRs, and my extra DMX cables. Well, actually, all the DMX cables are in there. And then lastly, over there is all the bags. I already put the cables in the side pouches on all the bags. Well, guys, that's pretty much a wrap on this cable video. It might be a little sporadic. I hope I edited it together great. But that is pretty much maintenance, labeling, organization, and storage. <laughs> I couldn't think of what the word would be for the putting them in bags and stuff, but storage. So that is pretty much, oh, and winding up cables, all that fun stuff. So everything you wanted to know about maintaining and keeping cables, there you go. This is the first episode in the cable series that I'm gonna be doing. There is also gonna be a video breaking down uh, different XLR cables, why certain ones cost a buttload and why there are the cheapest ones of the cheap. And speaking of that, uh, if you have any comments related to this video, questions, leave them down in the comment section below as well as any future cable related videos you guys want to see. Then if also you like this video on top of that, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Also if you're new and you're not subscribed and you you, you like DJ educational stuff, I, I think that's what I provide, but uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Yeah, I would show you a DJ related shirt, but I don't have one on, but uh, DJ Life Clothing, be sure to click the link right there, check out all the fun, awesome, funny little DJ related t-shirts, and that's pretty much it guys, uh, my name is DJ Rick Webb, it's like 2 o'clock in the morning right now, I am super tired, so peace out, and keep them records spinning, or wait, no, I say keep them records spinning, peace out, wait, what?
Makes no sense. Dude, it's like 2 o'clock in the morning. Bye, guys.